All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the Beavercraft hand hatchet and why I am very sad about this little guy. Now, if you guys know anything about the channel, you probably know that I really love my small, light, handy hatchets that are, you know, like hand portable, especially things like my GBA wildlife hatchet is one of my go-to and overall favorite hatchets of all time. And I've even said it's one of the best survival tools of all time, albeit some people probably don't agree. So when I saw this Beavercraft hatchet come out, I was pretty excited about it because it had a lot of potential. Potential. But today we're going to go over the pros, the cons, and ultimately why this makes me sad for one and why I can't recommend it for two. So first off, let's talk about this little hatchet and some of the pros to it. Now I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see it because this guy is tiny as you guys can see. All right, so you guys are moved a little bit closer. I'm gonna extend this guy out so that you can see it in its more complete and uh, entirety. An 11 inch hafted a hatchet, keep wanting to say axe, and that is why essentially a hand hatchet, of course, because it is designed to be very small, very lightweight, and very compact. Now, a few use cases for something this small, very similar to my wildlife hatchet, is one, these are the types of hatchets that are some of the easiest and most portable to carry. Whether your pants have like a hammer or axe loop, like uh, my Fiel Raven Vita Pros, not the non-vented version, actually have a pocket, an integral pocket for hatchets like this. Um, there are other pants that can you know uh, carry these very well once again uh, Carhartts uh, usually have a hammer loop uh, or kind of like a little loop built into them that you can throw these on works great so these things are super portable and to be honest a hatchet like this especially with a thicker head like this one that you can see here is pretty darn versatile for doing a wide variety of tasks from uh, more rough end or fast kind of nitty-gritty um, or not nitty-gritty but like rough uh, and just quick field dressing of game animals I've processed a lot of things like grouse and other game birds with my wildlife hatchet not quite this one unfortunately but uh, you know these hatchets can do a really good job at stuff like that of course they are very good at carving and doing finer and more detailed work so the coolest thing about small hatchets like these and why i end up loving them so much is you can take down things like wrist thick and even sometimes a little bit larger trees but you can also sit there and plane down or pare down wood if you're trying to make things like spoons or bowls. This is super handy, especially even choked back. You're going to be able to get a lot of very good strikes, um, even like in a medium grip for this. And that is, I think, where the primary intention of this hatchet is, especially with this Fawn's foot being very... Um, non-flared and more tapered it's designed so that you can really choke back and hold it towards the back here and without dealing with any kind of like flared fawn's foot similar to what you would see out of something like a wildlife hatchet or smaller uh, hatchets from other manufacturers like Holtefors, Holtzbruck, uh, others like that. So anyways um, that is a cool thing that's why I love the size. What got me was the fact that this is a hand foraged piece and I will say this about the hand foraging i am slightly dubious about how much of this is hand foraged um, i do think that it is hand foraged but unfortunately i'll have to hop off the truck here i think to show you but unfortunately hopefully you guys can pick it up there is a heavy amount of surface grinding on this so i'm not sure how much of this is actually hand forged unfortunately i didn't bring um, my wildlife hatchet to compare or contrast but you'll notice with things like um my wildlife hatchet or any true like 100 hand forged piece you'll notice a lot more you know hammer marks and when they are more hand forged it takes more time it's more expensive but i think it's just a little bit i don't know it's a little bit better in my opinion ultimately it's really the same when it comes down to use but take that for what it's worth this is hand forged to an extent but there is a large amount of grinding that goes on here to actually bring the bit of the axe to an edge now talking about the edge specifically here this edge is what i would consider 
pretty close, maybe, you know, slightly sharper than a butter knife, but it's pretty dull. And in the past, I've been very critical of companies that have such dull edges, but I, for the sake of the video, me personally, I prefer very sharp edges, but for the sake of the video, we will say that it's just fine because I know that there's mixed opinions out there. Some of the viewers, um, you know, really prefer having a, you know, more dull edge. And essentially what that more dull edge gives you is slight a slight increase in edge overall edge durability so if you are using this and you know say it strikes rocks or gravel or something like that you know you're going to ding up the edge but it's not going to like chip or break out like something like a wildlife hatchet that has a far more tapered grind would definitely chip and break as opposed to this you'd see like small little dings and dents but you're not really going to see as much because one it's dull and there's just more material behind that edge so that's kind of my opinion on it. It's not too bad. I will say the grinds are pretty darn even for both sides. Of course, it is a convex kind of Scandinavian grind, very similar to what you'd see on something like a Holtzfors, a Holtzbruck, um, any of those types. Like I said, GBA is a little bit different because they tend to have a far more tapered, almost, you know, knife-like edge to them. But still, this is pretty good. It's pretty decent if it was up to me, and uh, this is my hatchet. So when it comes down to it, I am going to end up sharpening this but for the sake of uh, this video and just talking about this guy um, you know it's out of box edge is like okay you could definitely do some work with it and don't be wrong this would bite into wood but uh, yeah now, one thing I will say from the bit of use I've used this, and admittedly, I haven't used it a ton, but from the little bit of use that I have used this guy, one thing that I dislike, especially that I do want to point out as a serious knock against this and something that I'll probably end up modifying myself, is that you'll see towards the pull of this, and I'm not a huge fan personally of hatchets that are designed to have hammer pulls because you can end up damaging the wood and the handle hammering with this thing. So keep that in mind and take it for what it's worth worth but uh, I will say they've tried to taper this off you can see these types of like chanfers here but unfortunately each one of these edges like these leading edges right here where my thumb is is exceedingly sharp so what that means is especially noticeable with small hatchets because you have a higher inclination to like feather chip feather stick and really choke up behind this guy like this little piece of metal right here is very sharp and it stabs the back of my like palm right here every single time I hold it like that and then I quickly have to like remember I'm like ouch and then I adjust to where it's not as bad but do keep that in mind I really dislike that they chanfered that um, the way that they did because once again I don't think it's very necessary or important and once again it's very sharp so I'm going to have to take a dremel and like knock off each one of these edges because it's just too sharp um, and so yeah definitely do not love that so overall, when it comes down to it, I really don't mind this hatchet. Another thing that I'm not the largest fan of is that, once again, you can tell that this thing is pretty well ground. So they've definitely added this carbon scaled look to it. And I understand that's partly for corrosion resistance, but I'm not a huge fan of like artificially added um, kind of finishes, especially when it's like a carbon scale, because it's trying to make this hatchet look more hand finished than it actually is and once again this is something that unfortunately like someone who doesn't own true hand forged hatchets like gbas wetterlings holt of fours holt spruiks um, they probably wouldn't even notice this but if you set this side by side true hand forged hatchets you will notice that this is like way too perfect of a carbon scale finish for it to be legitimate um, or like to be natural so this was definitely applied after the actual hatchet was primarily like after it was ground down but before the bevel or like the grind for the cutting edge was made so anyways not a huge fan of that but the true thing that i really dislike about this hatchet is unfortunately the head to haft or handle fitment and one thing that other um, hatchet and axe tubers have commentated on before and an immediate disqualifier for me from frontline and like full-on use is poor fitment slash any type of filling in the head so what i mean by this is if you guys look at this overall the fitment is pretty good around the bottom i can't find any faults you guys can look there i don't see any major gaps or really anything the ears seem to line up just fine everything seems to be okay however when you 
flip it to the top, you guys will immediately notice, especially back here, like everything looks good. I even like how they use a little brass um, metal, um, what is this, like secondary pin or secondary, gosh, I'm blanking on the names of these things right now, but they use a secondary um, piece here or bit to really hold this thing and solidify it. And I like that it's brass because brass is far less likely to rust because it doesn't rust at all. So this should not like rust out. So that's pretty cool. But you guys will notice back here, hopefully, that there is a large portion of wood filler. And I actually kind of picked out some of it already. And that is because, as I'll show you guys here, wood filler is a very interesting material when it comes down to like its use. So this is a very interesting material because when it's used in finishing for things, it can look nice. But unfortunately, when you put it in a hatchet like this, uh, because the high levels of shock and like when you go to strike something with a hatchet, there's a large degree of shock that goes throughout the head. So invariably, wood fillers are sensitive to that shock and will invariably break off, chip off and fail. And when it comes down to it, what you're left with here is a wide open gap of space that was previously filled in with wood filler. Now, the problem with that is that as you continue to use a hatchet like this, it is going to develop head rock in here and it may not be severe it may be severe once again i haven't used it extensively enough to know how bad that head rock will be but there will be some degree of head rock because that eye is not perfectly fit to the handle of the hatchet now my initial thought is sometimes you know the handle is the problem and sometimes people shave down the handle too much but what i think is actually the problem with this guy is that the eye was not properly made on this hatchet so therefore uh you know when you see really good fitment towards the back of the handle on the bottom end that's nice but when you see a poor fitment towards the top of the back end uh, usually is indicative of the fact of whatever eye punch they were using when they forged this head was either inconsistent or the blacksmith who made it was inconsistent and made the top of this eye um, eyelet too large and so now whenever you naturally plane down the wood to shove the head onto a piece of wood you are going to see a large gap there that will develop some degree of head rock and can potentially um, bring some issues now that's really unfortunate for me because I, there are a lot of things that I really like about this hatchet and there's a lot of things I want to like. Things that are really good, you know, there's no finish on this handle. It's really nice, really plain. I will say they did put their logo in pretty deep in my opinion. They use some kind of laser etch, but uh, you know, this thing is pretty cool. I really do want to like this hatchet, I do. But uh, yeah, that part is pretty unfortunate that this, um, that this hatchet has such a poor eye fitment. So that is why, unfortunately, I cannot recommend it. I do like the fact that it comes with a mask. I will say another thing I dislike about the mask, and this is things that like you just learn from using tools a lot, is that the stitching is not preferable. I would much rather have rivets. There's a reason why I feel like I keep talking about GBA, but GBA simply just does things really well. But GBA, they do not use any stitches in their uh, mask. Masks, and that's because eventually stitches can either rot, they can get cut, they can fail. Rivets are a lot harder to fail over time. So I really do prefer rivets and a generous amount of them in my masks as opposed to stitching. And it's kind of funny because they actually did use rivets on their little loop for holding the hatchet to like your belt. So they definitely know how to use rivets and they do use rivets partly on the construction of this guy, but they do not use any rivets on the construction of the mask. So it is unfortunate, but that is my kind of findings, opinion, and overall experiences so far with the Beavercraft hand hatchet. Um, it is a really cool hatchet. It does have a lot going for it. And I would say this hatchet isn't too bad. It comes in about $70 on Amazon on, which sounds like a lot, but for hand forged hatchets, it's pretty okay. Like that's not a horrible price to be honest. So, you know, I would say buy at your own risk because I don't know if every single hatchet is going to have as poor of an eye fitment. Truthfully, it could just be my hatchet. And uh, that's totally something that could be the case, right? Like every handmade tool is susceptible to 
inconsistency in the build quality. So I would say if you are looking for a hatchet like this, don't necessarily, like I would say, especially if you buy it on Amazon because you can return it, I would say go for it. If it's something that you need and something that you want or you can use, I'd say go for it. And if it ends up having a poor fitment, just send it back for a refund because then you're not really out anything. Because I do think that these hatchets would probably, like not all of them are gonna have poor fitment, hopefully. Um, and I will say that I think that these hatchets do have a lot going for them overall. But uh, yeah, mine in particular is no bueno. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.